Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Monday, October the 30th. I'm Rafi Boyajian, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be looking at what's happening in the currency markets today. The US dollar got a further boost on Friday following the stronger than expected uh, GDP numbers for the third quarter. Uh, although it is off those highs, um, it does remain fairly buoyant. Um, we are seeing Treasury yields fall back a little bit um, following uh, those reports on Friday that Fed Governor Jerome Powell uh, is now the favorite to be appointed as the next Fed Chair. Uh, given that Powell uh, is not as hawkish as the previous favorite John Taylor, um, th th that's uh, that's led to some losses for the US dollar. Um, another focus this week is the FOMC uh, announcement on Wednesday um, following the conclusion of the Fed's two-day monetary policy uh, meeting. Uh, in the meantime, the ECB, which already met last week on Thursday, uh, their decision is heavily weighing on the euro um, as um, the, the fact that the, the ECB's forward guidance suggests that interest rates in the eurozone are unlikely to rise any time in uh, 2018. Um, although the, the, the decision about um, the quantitative easing, that was pretty much in line with expectations. Um, and oil prices are doing uh, rather well this morning uh, following um, the, the on Friday, uh, sorry, last week comments by uh, the Saudi Crown Prince uh, who gave his backing uh, for extension to the output deal. But let's first start with the US dollar. Uh, we can see a bit of a divergence between US dollar, uh, dollar yen and the dollar index. Um, the reason why dollar yen um, uh, is down is because that's more sensitive to uh, the what's happens what's happening with treasury yields which are down on those reports that Jerome Powell could be appointed as the next Fed chair uh, but let's see what happened last week we saw the uh, GDP numbers for the third quarter which showed the US economy expanding by three percent annualized rate in the third quarter versus forecasts of two and a half percent and that's only slightly below the 3.1 percent seen in the second quarter showing that the, the hurricanes that we saw uh, in September had very minimal impact on the uh, economy. Uh, also later today we've got uh, personal consumption, personal spending numbers as well as the PC price index which is the Fed's uh, preferred uh, inflation measure. Those are due later in the day and that comes ahead of um, the, the Fed meeting that starts tomorrow and concludes on Wednesday. The Fed will likely hold rates at, at a range of between one, one and one and a quarter percent, uh, but they will likely signal a rate hike in uh, December. Uh, dollar yen did hit a three months high, 114.44. The dollar index uh, rose above 95. Uh, they're both down a little bit uh, this morning. And we can see the reason for that. Uh, Two-year and 10-year treasury yields. Two-year yields had risen to a nine-year high uh, last week. They're down uh, this morning. 10-year yields are also down. Um, and that comes on the back of uh, reports on Friday, uh, which suggest that Jerome Powell will be announced as the new Fed chair at some point this week. Trump is due to fly off to Asia on Friday, so he's expected to make an announcement on the on the new Fed chair uh, potentially uh, before that. Uh, also, uh, we are seeing some progress in that uh, Russian investigation where a special counsel Robert Mueller was appointed to to lead those investigations of apparent uh, collusions uh, between Russia and the Trump election campaign team. Um, his, uh, the, the investigation will likely lead to uh, the first charges being announced later today. We don't know yet who's going to be uh, or which members of the Trump's campaign team could potentially be charged uh, as part of that, those investigations, but that could potentially lead to some trouble uh, for the dollar uh, in the coming days. Uh, let's look at the euro now. We can see that big drop on th uh, Thursday and Friday following the ECB meeting. Uh, the euro had its worst week last week, uh, losing 1.5% against the dollar and uh, uh, dropping to three months low, 1.1573. Uh, the ECB has expected did halve their asset purchases from 60 to 30 billion euros per month and extended the duration by nine months till September 2018. Uh, but overall, the ECB's tone was very dovish as they kept the plan open-ended. They could potentially ex extend it beyond September. Uh, and also um, 
therefore what guidance suggests that they're unlikely to to be raising rates uh, anytime in 2018 uh, and potentially uh, the first rate hike in the eurozone could not come until well into uh, 2019 so all of that is weighing uh, on the euro plus uh, the situation in spain is getting worse uh, on friday the catalan parliament went ahead and declared independence uh, but in the meantime at the same time the spanish government um, imposed direct rule following the vote in the Senate. Uh, so the Spanish government have now dismissed the Catalan parliament and has called uh, regional elections for December the 21st. Uh, but the uh, Catalan president, Carlos Puigdemont, is not backing down. He's saying he's calling for Catalans to, for democracy democratic opposition to direct rule. Uh, he also faces the prospect of being jailed over his stance. Uh, in the meantime, on Sunday, we saw protests by pro-union demonstrators. Uh, so it looks like it's going to be a pretty volatile there um, in the coming weeks. And that is also having a negative impact on the euro. Uh, the pound is also not doing too well either. The Bank of England does meet on Wednesday and Thursday to decide whether or not to raise rates uh, for the first time in over a decade. Inflation in the UK has shot up to 3%, uh, but given that the, the, the spike in inflation is likely to be temporary and we are seeing signs of a slowdown, um, Many MPC members are cautious about raising rates uh, uh, in November, uh, but all the indications are that there will be a majority voting in favor of a rate hike, possibly by just no quite, uh, quarter of a percentage points, uh, and that that it will just be a one-off rate hike, uh, a possible reversal of the emergency cut we saw soon after Brexit. Uh, if we do see a split vote in favor of a rate hike on Thursday, uh, that could lead to the pound, uh, further retracing um, that big jump we saw uh, for late August uh, in uh, up to mid-December, uh, where it rose to 15 months high of above 1.36 against the US uh, dollar. If we see that, there's not going to be further hikes beyond November uh, in the UK. Uh, plus, uh, political uncertainty in the UK as well, given the, the government's handling of the Brexit negotiations and their lack of clear um, strategy over Brexit as well, with uh, numerous reports contradicting each other about uh, what ministers are saying uh, or what they want about Brexit. So all of that uh, in the past week has also uh, been negative on sterling, although it has managed to hold above the 1.30 level. It's currently trading about 1.3164. Uh, and finally, looking at oil prices, um, of course, last week uh, uh, we had Saudi Arabia's crown prince saying that he's in favor of extending the output cap deal beyond March 2018. Uh, prior to that, we had heard from Russia's president, uh, who also voiced his support for an extension, um, plus uh, general signs uh, in the market that uh, global inventories are falling and demand is rising. So all of that has driven the international benchmark Brent crude to more than two year higher, $60.89 a barrel uh, today. WTI crude isn't doing so well, although it did manage to hit an eight months higher, $54.20. Uh, the reason why US prices have been lagging Brent crude uh, is because of uh, US output uh, has been rising and ex uh, along with exports uh, throughout 2017. Um, and last week, we also saw the active oil rigs also rising for the first time in four weeks. Uh, so uh, we're seeing a bit of a lag in U.S. prices uh, because of that. Uh, and that explains the big discount between Brent crude and WTI crude. But overall, uh, oil prices are looking very bullish uh, in the past week. Uh, and finally, finally, looking at today's economic calendar, we did have Japanese retail sales uh, numbers early in the day which came in below expectations but was still not too bad at 2.2%. Bank of Japan uh, starts, uh, has will start it or has started its two-day monetary policy meeting uh, today. We'll, they will announce their decision tomorrow um, as they're expected to hold rates uh, as well as their QE um, unchanged um, and 
uh, we know that Bank of Japan is unlikely to be uh, moving towards tightening anytime soon, unlike other central banks. Uh, in Germany, we had uh, retail sales, and we're going to have uh, preliminary inflation numbers for October later. Uh, we're going to have Eurozone Economic Sentiment Index, uh, but the major data for today will, did be, will be the personal consumption and income numbers out of the US. That's it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.